welcome back to my channel happy hookers today we're going to be taking a look at how to crochet a flat circle now I've currently I've currently I have actually moved house um, in the last couple of weeks I know great timing and everything and I've been obsessed with making um, lots of lovely new coasters to go around the house in this gorgeous mustard color and the yarn that I'm currently in love with if you follow me over on Instagram is this Siddhar number one chunky and oh it feels just it's buttery is the only word I can describe so I've crocheted this flat circle using double crochet in US terms and the reason for that is it builds up so quickly we've only got five rounds um, I think I made about four or five last night while my partner was watching a movie and we sat chilling out on Easter Sunday so really really nice sort of perfect lounge um, activity providing your cats obviously don't eat your yarn like mine do so let's get started so for this I'm using a five millimeter crochet hook and you're going to start if I can untaffle my yarn there we go I'm going to start with a magic circle and if you're unfamiliar with how to crochet the magic circle um, I'll pop a link above however the way I do it is I wrap my yarn around my two fingers like that. I take it over and cross it over. I pick my hook up and I pick up this one, spinning it round. I then do a little turn so that it's made a little cross over there. And then I pick back up the yarn like so. It is quite tricky for beginners, so I would recommend definitely practicing it or watching the other video in a little more, bit more detail. So we're going to chain two. And the thing about my crochet circles is I don't count the chain two as a stitch. Now, traditionally you would count your chain two or your chain three as a stitch, but I tend to find that if you do that, and let me just grab the circle back. If you do that, what you get, if we take a look at this, ooh, rogue bit of yarn there, is you will see where your your seam has been now I can see here very easily that my seams here what you will get is you will get some gapping or gaping not a very nice word uh, like this so by keeping those chain twos as extras and they don't really affect the circle at all and make it bulge what it does is it makes sure it's really nice and thin thick and full around the join but it's completely up to you if you want to ignore um you know if you want to ignore this and you want to count this as a stitch please by all means go ahead so once i've done my slip knot or made my magic circle i do an extra two chains and then we're going to create 10 double crochets into the circle so yarn over insert into the loop i nearly said hoop then yarn over pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. So exactly the same again, you're going to yarn over, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. I just realized that it's a little bit dark and I'm going to open my blinds because for once the sun is not blaring in. I'm gonna do it without you. Ah, there we go, some daylight. But when the sun's bright filming, it can be awfully annoying. Anyway, sorry about that. Let's carry on. So we've got our two double crochets here and our chain of two. So we're going to do eight more. So yarn over, insert into the hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And you're going to carry on all the way until you've got 10. So I'll, I'll do my 10 along with you so that we can do our 10 together. And I'll hopefully not have any interruptions by me opening my blinds or my cat scratching at the door. I did envisage I'd be one of those extremely polished um, in crochet YouTubers with my studio set up and everything going right. But I've learned that, do you know what, real life is real life and something will always get in the way a cat will always eat my yarn or my partner will decide he's going to put the washing machine on um, so I don't know if other people have struggles but please do share them with me what are your biggest crochet interruptions even if you're just sat crocheting or you're counting oh 
the counting interruption. I mean, how many bags and tote bags and t-shirts have that on? So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One more. Perfect. So once you've crocheted your 10 double crochet, give yourself a little bit of room and then you're going to locate your tail and the best bit in the world. And I always feel this should be accompanied by this noise as it closes. Tuck that nice and tight, pop it round the back, pop your hook back in and then you're going to join with a slip stitch. Now I do jo do joined rounds and the reason we do joined rather than continuous is because it's such a tall stitch um, you're going to want to join the rounds. So what we're going to do for me, can you see I've got my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I'm not going into this bit here. I'm actually going into my first stitch so that it looks nice and neat. So insert for the slip stitch into that, yarn over and pull through and then pull straight through the one that is on your hook and there you have, and then you can pull this a bit tighter to close your circle. So I'm now going to chain two and I chain two, traditionally you might chain three for a turning chain for double crochet. Um, I think because this yarn is a little bit thicker and my, um, my hook is a little bit thicker, the chain three is too high. But what's also worth noting is I'm not trying to replicate a double crochet. I'm simply trying to get enough height to do my double crochets around. So then I'm going to place a double crochet straight into the same stitch that I did. There we go. And then we're going to place two double crochet in every one all the way around. So if you carry on placing two double crochet when you get round to the other end, so and I'll just do a few for those unfamiliar with the double crochet. So remember it's yarning over, inserting into the stitch, yarning over, pulling back through, yarning over, pulling through two, yarning over, pulling through two. So yarn over, insert into the same place because we're placing two, yarning over and pulling back through, yarning over, pulling through two, yarning over, pulling through two. Pulling some more yarn up. If only there was, you could teach animals to um, pull your yarn so that you've got a never ending supply of slack yarn, wouldn't that be great? So two double crochets in every stitch all the way around. Oh, if you haven't tried this Sedar number one chunky, I would definitely recommend heading over and buying some. I use Wool Warehouse for most of my yarn and um, the, the service is fantastic um, and the collection is just just really, really good. Um, in terms of pricing, I, I think they're relatively competitive. I mean, if you do have a local yarn store, I do always say, you know, please do support local. Um, it is really, really important. And you also find that there's a really nice um, crochet community or or fiber arts knitting community at your local stores. Um, but it's certainly when you've got, if you're like me and a trip into town fills you with dread, um, I tend to buy a lot of stuff online. Okay, so we're nearly back round at the end. I've got a couple more to go. And then I'll show you how I do the end. So, a little bit of a split stitch. I tend to find just undo it, start again. Perfect. So, as a quick recap, can you see we've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and then the 2 here is only actually a 1 for me. And the reason I like to keep it as a 1, if I'd kept it as a 2, can you see we've got quite a big gap to bridge there which would work but for me I tend to find that it always ends up leaving me a gap so I place another one in this stitch here which is the stitch that my chain two is coming out of so I place another one which takes it up to 20 and then I hop over here and I place my single crochet in and voila there we go can you see looks very very nice very nice well i am biased because i am creating it so if you're familiar with a circle increase 
um, this bit should be a doddle for you. However, if you're not, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to talk through and I'll put some prompts up on the screen. So with the circle, you always do your number of stitches in the center and then you always double them here. So we're going to imagine that this is, um, I did 10, so we're going to imagine it's a pie. Stick with me, guys. A pie with 10 sli imaginary slices. And every slice on every round has one more stitch. So if we take one slice, in this one it has one, in this one it had two, in the next one it would have three, and in the next one it would have four. So on this next round, every section of two we've got, we need to make three. So we do that by, do my chain of two, by doing one double crochet and then two in the next one. And I don't really know where the pie came from, but it just was a way to visualize to people how those increases happened. So we've taken two stitches and we've turned them into three. So we do one in the next one, and then we're gonna do two in the next one. Yeah, one in the next one, two in the next one. I'm going to stop saying one in the next one and two in the next one because I'm pretty sure we've got that. But if we crochet along together and uh, have some random chit chat. So it's currently Easter Monday here. Um, it's a little bit dull where I am. I live in a little village not far from a city called Lincoln. Um, not a lot to do. I was going to go on a bike ride. Um, I don't know about you guys. Um, lots of barbecuing yesterday, um, I could certainly smell that, and lots of jobs already been done. So today is the perfect day um, for filming. So one, then two, then one, then two, then one, then two. And then later on, I think I'm going to do my favourite activity, which is a good old Instagram scroll of some of my favourite crochets. And I've actually got a video up last week. I'll pop a link below with my, my current favourite five inst crochet Instagram accounts. And I mean, cutting it down to five was certainly tricky. So um, please do check it out. And uh, I'd love to hear your, your favourite Instagram accounts. Um, I used to find that Pinterest was probably the best area to go. And certainly for patterns and things, Pinterest is still one of the best places. And obviously Ravelry. Um, however, Instagram just for inspiration and oh, the photography there. Oh, amazing, amazing stuff. Some really talented people on there. So what I like to do here is I'm just double checking because I'm chit chatting away um, that I am doing my one and my two and my one and my two. Um, because we're using the double crochet, I don't tend to find that you need to use stitch markers. Um, however, if you are more comfortable using a stitch marker, um, please do. Um, you can quite easily kind of see where the end of the round is. If you're using continuous rounds, then definitely do a stitch marker. I can't tell you the amount of times I've thought, oh, I don't need a stitch marker. I'm an experienced crocheter. Big mistake. No matter how many years you've been crocheting, do not think you don't need stitch markers. You're going to spend a lot of time pulling your work down in frustration. So I've just done my last um, two and I'm very close. So I, I know that where I'm at now is, um, is certainly very close. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just do a little count up here. So we're going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. And we need 30 and 30 is the perfect number. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to be placing one here because I only need 30 and I'm pretty confident that that's going to work quite nicely for my 30. Perfect. So we've gone 
10, 20, 30. And the reason it's going up in 10 is because we've got 10 in the center. So whatever number it is in the center, it's always gonna go up by that number. So next, imagine those pieces of pie one stitch, two stitch, three stitch, you've got it. We're gonna put four stitches in each section of three. And it's really, really simple. What you're going to do is you're going to do one double crochet, another single double crochet, single double crochet. Cracky, if anyone was listening that didn't know crochet, they would wonder what we're talking about. So single, single, and then an increase. So two singles and then an increase. So there we've taken our three and we've made it our four. And then our next one will simply be doing three singles and an increase. And you can keep going as many as you want. So let's get on to this round. And this can actually be the final round. I mean, I made my, lost it now, where is it? I made this one a little bit larger because I just wanted a little bit more space around. It does work nicely for mugs and things, but it also works nicely for kind of pots and plant pots, etc. So let's go. So a double, a double. Oh, a split stitch, no. A double, a double, and then an increase. And then we have our increase. Perfect. Oh, watch is going off. I turn all my notifications off bar that single one. So a double, a double, and an increase. She says as she then skips over. That's why I always like to have a little check and just go, yeah, I've got a two there, I've got a two there. There's me telling you all to, uh, you know, hop down and do this while you're watching the television um, and then wondering why it's turning into, you know, a little cone rather than a, a coaster. So two in this one. Another one in there, a double, a double. If there's any other patterns that you'd like to see, I'm kind of really enjoying these sort of small shapes at the moment, circle squares, hearts. I'm certainly thinking I'm gonna do a few more. If there's anything that you, you'd really like to see, um, I'd definitely be up for doing that. Um, please pop a comment down below. Um, and if you do like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. It's one of those really odd ones. You tend to watch videos, you tend to subscribe to people whose videos you like, but. <sighs> I don't know about you, but I don't actually very often give a video a thumbs up. And yet when you start filming your own videos, you realize just how much it really does mean for people to give it a thumbs up. I think you're probably likely to get your video shown more, maybe it'll reach more people. So if you do like my crochet and my random Easter Monday ramblings about how lovely the weather is and whether my cats are going to attack my yarn, please give it a thumbs up. Um, I post on a Friday. Um, every week there's always a new crochet video. Um, I've recently been exploring some new stitches um, because I do love textured crochet work. So if you are interested in um, new crochet stitches, learning something different, you know, breaking away from singles and doubles um, and colour, um, I'm really keen to introduce neutrals and plain colours but add interest and variety through stitches and textures and that's kind of the crochet journey that I'm going on at the moment. Um, so if you're kind of in the same place, um, yeah, definitely please give me a uh, cheeky subscribe and uh, I'll be back again on Friday with some new bits. Okay, so we've got to the end, we've done that. We're going to hop across here and we're going to... Can you see how that has made a little bit of a gap? Now that doesn't please me at all. So I am going to, the first thing is to check and think, oh, have I not done enough stitches? But I know I have done enough stitches, but it just so happens that the weight's fallen. So I am going to break all the rules and I'm gonna put one more in there. Why not? Who cares? 
put one more in it's the last round if you are putting one more in just be careful on the next round that you're gonna have to just put one more in but look at that look at that let's call this no rules crochet so I'm going to finish off so the way I like to do this is if I get myself or if you haven't got these darning needles they are an amazing set of darning needles there's actually a link below in the description to them on amazon where i pretty much buy everything but that is just such a handy little pot um and they certainly don't end up down the side of the sofa like a lot of needles do so what you're going to do is you're going to snip off give yourself a good six inches um she says that she cuts 18 inches <laughs> pull that through and then you're going to first time i mean yeah look have you seen the size of the hole in this needle fabulous so this is the bit that can be a little bit tricky what i like to do is i like to pull it back to the right as if i were finishing the stitch and then i just like to take it around and pop it the needle oh, focus through the two there like this and just very gently making sure that I'm not tugging it and making it quite clearly looks like the top of an orange um, like that and then turn it over and then to just make sure it doesn't get pulled anymore I just pop a little stitch I don't know why I'm whispering it's almost like the care more careful you have to be the softer your voice has to go okay so we'll turn it over so the aim here is to take this yarn and weave it all the way down to the middle and because this is quite chunky it is quite forgiving it won't really matter um, where I kind of poke it um, it's probably best not to try and split your stitches if you can help it um, so I'm just going to weave that down there careful not to pull and pull that bit in that should be okay um, if you're using these as coasters like I am, you're probably going to find that, oh, and look, straight back into the little handy holster. Ooh, my needle holster. Um, yeah, you're probably going to find that they're going to want to go in the wash. Um, coffee stains and red wine stains and various things. So weaving this down and then popping yourself a nice couple of knots in the center is definitely going to help them um, escape washing machine doom. And I like to put three in because it doesn't really matter if there's a bit of a bulky knot on the back because you're never going to see it. So then a snip and a snip. Some people like to secure that even with a little bit of glue. Um, I tend to find that's all right. And there you have get rid of those unsightly bits of yarn and then you have your crochet coaster so thank you ever so much feel free to add another round if you'd like one um, as big as this I mean it'd be amazing you could do a series of them a series of different um, sizes in a centerpiece um, really pretty um, some color changing I am going to be doing a video on color changing soon if you're interested so it would be lovely to maybe add like an accent edging on it um, and there's all sorts of amazing ones I've seen them where they look like slices of fruit or cats heads and things so I mean you really can just go coaster crazy I'm sure there's an Instagram account called that so thank you ever so much for watching I um, hope you've managed to make yourself a successful little circle and you've enjoyed my random crochet ramblings I'll be back next Friday um, make sure you subscribe hit that notification bell happy hooking as always and I'll see you soon guys bye